Hello! Welcome to the Georgia Tech Library Data Visualization Labs workshop series. In today's session, we will be mapping census data from the Simply Analytics database with Tableau. Part 1 Retrieving Data from Simply Analytics. Before we begin, note that there are two versions of Tableau the desktop version and Tableau Public. Tableau Public is free and works with most file types. However, it only connects to two cloud storages, Google Sheets and Web Data Connector, and you cannot save files locally. Tableau Desktop is not free, but the library does have a paid license, and it is available in the library's DataViz Lab. Tableau also offers a one-year free educational license for this version at www.tableau.com backslash academic. Tableau Desktop supports more file types than Tableau Public and connects to most major databases. You can use either version you have for this exercise. If you don't have any, I would recommend you use Public. I have put the link on the screen. Please pause here, download, and install before proceeding. Section 2 – Retrieving Population and Median Household Income Data For this workshop, we will be comparing the household income data to the population growth data to determine whether there may be a correlation. Our assumption or hypothesis to test is that if the population is growing, then the economy may also be good with more people moving to the county for jobs, etc. We're exploring the correlation between the two variables to prove or disprove our hypothesis. In the first section, we will retrieve data from a popular database called Simply Analytics from the Georgia Tech Library website, library.gatech.edu, go to the A to Z database list. From the section under S, navigate to Simply Analytics, formerly titled Simply Maps. The library has a limited number of licenses or seats, so downloading your data beforehand is advised. You may create your own account in Simply Analytics or sign in as a guest. I will log in as a guest for the sake of saving time. By default, you will see a new project window. We will start by searching a location. Since we are visualizing Georgia, search Georgia State in the location window, then click on Next. You will get a window of the most popular data categories. We will uncheck other options and check population and median household income since these are the only variables we are interested in. The next step will be to create a new project. You should now see a Georgia map that displays the content, income, and population by county. You can double-click the project to rename it. Example, title, double-click, and reset it to My Georgia Data, for example. Go to the comparison table in the upper right section of the screen to check your data. Median household income, population. By default, you should see the most recent year's median household income and population data. This is great, but we'll need to add the other variables will be gathering population and median household income data from the past five years. Click on the Population tab to get the population data from additional years. You should see several filters as you move down the column – age, gender, income, poverty, etc. At this point, we are not looking for subgroups. We are just looking for the population data from the past five years. Scroll further down the page. Select the population for 2020, 2019, and so forth to 2016. A check mark will indicate that the year has been selected. I'll pause the instruction for a few seconds here as you take some time to gather the population data for each year. Close the window and you should see that your table has populated with the other years you selected. 
US data should be viewable by default. You have the option of adding other variables. Let's go to the Income tab. Scroll down and select the median household income for 2020, 2019, 2018, and so forth as we did for population. Again, a check mark will indicate that the variable has been selected. And we'll pause again here as you go back and collect the income data for each of the five years for our table. Closing the window, you should again see that your table has populated with income for other years selected. Now, go to the right upper corner and select the New View option. Under New View, we will select and create a ranking table. When you click it, the data will load, but you may want to rename it, Georgia Data for example. Here you will see, by default, the large cities in Georgia. We are looking for counties. From the drop-down options, select Counties. You will see the top 100 counties by default. Since Georgia has 159 counties, click on the list and select 1000 to include all counties. Your table should now list all the counties with population and median income by year. Now that we have the data, it is time to export it. It is fine to export to Excel, and you will see other options. Section 3 Retrieving the Census Shapefile. For the county level, this is enough to create our visualization. In other circumstances, if we are working with census data at the region, tract, or block level, then we would need a format called a shapefile, created by the census for Tableau to create the map. What the shapefile does is to draw a polygon for each area in the dataset. Under the Map tab in the right column, go to View Action and select Shapefile. The only way to export from Simply Analytics is by emailing it to yourself. It should only take a few seconds to receive the file. The zip file you download should have everything you need for this exercise. All files for this exercise are also available at the Georgia Tech Library's Data Visualization Lab's GitHub page. I've included the link here. You can download the zip file from GitHub if you have experienced any problems emailing or receiving from Simply Analytics. Unzip the file on your desktop. You should see a folder with a data file, shapefile, and instruction page. Section 4 Connecting the Data. Now open and launch Tableau. When you open the program you should see data connectors on the left side. Some of the options are Excel, Text, Spatial or Shapefile, etc. Select the Excel file connector. Navigate to wherever you saved your files. Double-click it to load. You can also drag and drop the file to Tableau. This file should have all the county names, populations of different years, median household income for all years. You'll see a pound or hashtag sign at the top of each column, meaning the values are numeric. It can be a whole number or decimal. We also have data types, Boolean, and geographical roles. Section 5, Importing the Shapefile. Now, we will add the spatial file, which is the shapefile. Click on the Add button on top and click on the Spatial File Connector. Navigate to your Shapefile folder and select the .shp extension. Double-click the file to load. Then, you will drag and drop the file. 
You will notice that once you drag it to the right, a link is formed between these two files, which is Tableau asking you how you want to connect them. You should now see an Edit Relationship window, or two dots in other versions, which again is Tableau asking how to join the two files. From the drop-down, select Name under Data Source and Name 1 under the shapefile. Now that both files are connected, everything should be consolidated into one table. At the left bottom, the Worksheet tab should now appear as bright orange, indicating where to go next. Click the Canvas, switching to an empty worksheet, to begin creating your visualization. You should notice two separate tables in the column on the left, the Excel data and the shapefile. Under each table are all the columns that you have for that table. Section 6, Creating and Coloring the Map. Drag and drop Geometry onto the sheet. Now, drag and drop Name to the map. If you hover over the map, you should be able to see individual counties highlighted. Drag and drop the median household income for 2020 on the color tab under marks so that the tab is colored by the value of the 2020 median income. You can customize the map color. To do this, click on color. Then on the pop-up box, click on edit colors. On the drop-down button behind palette, automatic, Choose the color palette you like from the drop-down options. Red-green diverging is what we will choose for this exercise. Click OK when you are done. You have now finished creating the first frame of the map. Section 7, Creating and Embedding the Bar Chart. Go down to the bottom of the page and click on the tab on the right side of Sheet 1 to create a second sheet. In this frame, we are going to create a bar chart of five-year population to embed to the map. Drag and drop Name to Columns. Now, drag and drop Measure Values into Rows. All variables will appear under the marks. Drag and drop the unwanted ones out of the space. We'll take another brief pause here as you remove any unnecessary data. You should have Population 2016 to 2020 data under Measure Values only. Drag and drop measure names into columns so that the stack bars are shifted side by side. Drag and drop measure values on color so that all bars are colored by their values. To have all values showing on top of the bars, drag and drop measure values on label under marks. To the right, select Side-by-Side -side Bars. Drag Measure Values to Color. This will display as a gradient with taller bars having a darker shade. You have now completed the second sheet. Go back to your first sheet and use Tooltip to insert it. Under Tooltip, Select Insert on the tip right of the Edit box. Select Sheets, Sheet 2, then OK. To change the background map to a dark mode, go to Map, then Map Layers. On the left sidebar, change the background style to dark.
your final map should look like the map here, with a dark background and higher median income counties appearing green with lower income counties appearing red. The box should show selected county with pop-up and median income data for the years and color gradient selected. Hovering over the map, you will notice that the table only has four columns. We will go back into Tooltip and address this sizing issue so we get all five columns with all five years of data in just a few moments. For the last little touch-ups to make your frames clean and save space, we can adjust and clean up the view. If you want to adjust the pop-up window size for the embedded table, we can make changes to the size of the table in the tooltip. Select Tooltip and change max width and max height as needed. Select OK. Go back to Sheet 1 and hover over the map to view the change. By adjusting the size, we can now see more of our data. You can make other changes to the table. For example, we can remove the tick marks. Select Sheet 2 and right-click Value. You can select Edit Axis to remove the title. Again, view the change by going back to Sheet 1. For a cleaner view of the population data on Sheet 2, right-click Population Data and select Edit Alias. You can remove the hashtag before population, leaving just the year, example 2016. You can repeat for each year as needed. Go back to Sheet 1 and hover over the map to view those final changes. And there you have it. We have completed the workshop and we have mapped our census data to Tableau. Go back and adjust as you like, say for example using the tooltip. Switch between sheets to see how your adjustments impact the view of your tables. For more information on upcoming data visualization workshops, be sure to check the class schedule listing on the Georgia Tech Library's webpage or the data visualization site. You can also reach out to the team directly. We hope to see you again in the next workshop.